H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so um, yesterday we have seen how to create the um, structure of source. When my when I already have some source structure in file, uh, how do I import that structure in Informatica? Now let's now build the target. Now for target, I do not have such structure where I can import the structure. So what I have to do is I have to build it from scratch. So you go to this target menu target and go to create and then you give any name so let's say I give the name e m p l o y e e underscore t g t target right and then you have to select what kind of target you are planning to or what this structure will support what what kind of target so this is your flat file do create done so now you get a st blank structure. What, now what you have to do is you have to keep adding the columns. So you know what columns to add. You click here, it adds the column, and then you just write down the column name. The first name is employee underscore ID. Next column is with a full, you know, full underscore name. Then I have phone number, th or any phone underscore number. And then I have department ID, department underscore ID. Right? And full name, full name, I want to make the precision a little longer, so I'll just make it 30. Okay. And then click apply. Apply, okay. Now, by default, if, if you double click on this one again one more time, by default you see it's delimited, right? So by default the structure which you create is a delimited file. But I don't want it to be delimited. I want, to, want it to be fixed with. So I will use this one as a fixed with. Apply. Okay. Done. So right now what I have is I have imported the source structure and also what I have done is I have created the target structure. Now uh, what I have to do is I have to design, I have to create a mapping thing and see how can I connect source to target and transform the data as per my requirement, business requirement. So this is the window which where you have to go is your mapping designer, where you create the mapping. Okay? Mapping is basically the source to target mapping. Now go to your mapping tab in the menu bar, go to create and then do M underscore employee, give any name, okay, M underscore PGT. I give a name like this. You usually use M underscore for mapping, okay. That is a, a pretty much standard use. So one thing I want you to notice here in the left hand side, as soon as I created the target, you see the target. It uh, appeared in the subfolder, target subfolder. As soon as I created a mapping, you see the mapping is created in the subfolder in the left hand side. And also you see here the mapping is, this tells me that which mapping I'm working. So in the workspace, which mapping is open. Now I have to create the mapping between my source to target. What I'll do is I'll just drag and drop my source and drag and drop my target into my mapping designer workspace. Okay, and after that, I have to use uh, because one of my my requirement is to concatenate the first name and last name to make the full name. So I have to add a transformation. You go to transformation and do create, and the transformation which I'll add is expression transformation. Expression transformation. You give any name exp underscore e m p l o y e e. Okay done. 
Okay, now what I have to do is I have to drag and drop the columns which I want to connect into my target. So the columns would be my employee ID. I have to concatenate the first name and last name. So I need the first name and last name to make the full name. And also the phone number, where is that one? Phone number and also the department ID, right? Department ID. Now what I want to do is I want to connect the course from the expression to my target. So employee ID, first name, last name I'll not connect because I have to concatenate and make it a full name. Phone number I can connect because it is as is and department ID I can connect because it is as is. Now let's create the full name. Okay. If you go here, you can see the course which tells you these are the inputs. So in, here this is very important. And, and it tells you I O V. Okay. So I O V I stands for input port, O stands for output port, V stands for variable port. So right now if you look here, all these ports are input output. What does that mean is if you look here, the left hand side you see small black arrows and right hand side you see small black arrows. That means and these ports have the capability of taking the data from um, the uh, previous transformation and transform and pass the same data to the next transformation. That's what employee ID, phone number, and department ID is doing, right? But just think about it, the first name and last name. I don't want to pass the first name and last name as is, right? I want to transform it. I want to convert it as a full name. So what I have to do is I'll double click this and I will make this first name and last name as input port only. Okay, now if you click here, you see this they don't and the small black arrows do not show up in the right hand side. So they are my input port only right now. Um, now what I'm doing is I will create another port. So you click here, that's how you create one more port, and that is my full underscore name port. Okay. <coughs> but my full name, name port is my output port only, right? Because I'm not getting the full name values from my previous transformation. So it's an output port and the position would be 30 and in the expression now I have to write the logic to concatenate my first name and last name. So you go here in the ports, double click on the first name and then this is how you concatenate. Okay, Double pipe and what I want to do is I want to put a space between the first name and last name. So you put a space within single quotes and then concatenate your last name. So what it will do is it will take the first name, concatenate a space, and then and concatenate the last name. So that way I will get the first name space last name. <coughs> Click OK, apply, OK. And if you see here in the full name, you don't see the small black code in the left hand side because it's not and the value is not coming from the previous transformation. But see if you, you see here a small black arrow in the right hand side because it has the capability of passing the value to the next transformation. And then you have what you have to do is control S. That way you save all your work. Now my mapping is complete. So any questions anyone and until now how how we have created the mapping and any questions in that part? Anyone? Any questions? No? Okay. So you can understand, it's pretty much easy. You just drag and drop. So Shma, you have uh, to tell me like which part you want me to repeat. Uh, how to create the target table? You mean, you mean this one? How, I, how did I create this one? Okay. Mapping. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So basically, target is created. Uh, uh, you go to the target designer, go to the target, and do create. Give any name. Let's say I create one more time. One more. I, I select the test, and then you have to select from the list with what kind of target you are planning to prepare. So mine is a flat file. Then create. So done.
So that's how you create the target. And then what you do is you double click on this one, go to columns tab, and just keep on adding the columns what you want to add. That's how you do the target. Okay. And coming to the mapping, in, you go to the mapping designer, go to the mapping, and then create a mapping. In, let's say I create a mapping M underscore test one more and then uh, whatever source you want to bring in you bring in drag and drop from the left hand side whatever target you want to use you bring drag and drop and then go to the transformation create transformation so what I have uh, the transformation which I have used is expression transformation <coughs> underscore test and then create done and then so you got this transformation now whatever a force you want to add you add the force into the transformation into the target so that's how you create the mapping so anyway we I have recorded the say uh, uh, transform I have recorded the between the source and the transformation so it's just drag and drop I have recorded the session you can you can watch okay later on so let me continue so one thing I want to tell you is if you if you notice here as soon as I bring this source this is called your source qualifier SQ is your source qualifier the source qualifier comes by default with your source this is your source and this is your target and when source qualifier comes by default with your source it is also a transformation and it has a lot of utilities. But right now, just understand that source qualifier comes by default with your source. Now, let's, so this is my first phase is done, which is my creating the design. So I'm planning to go for a vacation, so all my planning is done. Now, what I have to do is I have to book the tickets, book the hotels, book the uh, uh, rental, and all the other bookings has to be done. So that will be done in the workflow manager. The first thing what you have to do is when you, once the design is done, you have to create a workflow. That is called your workflow. How do you create a workflow? You right click on your mapping and you just do generate workflow. And then just do next, next. Next, next. Finish. Okay. So your workflow is generated, but you cannot see the workflow in the power center designer you have to go to W which is your workflow manager to see the workflow. Let's click on the workflow manager. <coughs> see this workflow is created. Now in the workflow manager also you have three workspace. One is task developer, one is workflow designer, and one is work, workflow designer. So Leah, we'll, we'll work with the work, workflow designer in the free session. The rest are a little bit advanced. We, we, we cover in the actual class. So in the workflow designer, what you do is you just drag and drop the workflow in the workflow design on this. Okay, so this is how your workflow looks like. A, a, a start and then an arrow and this is your this is called your station okay so this this station is actually if you double click on the station you'll understand this station is built up on the mapping this is a mapping okay the station is built up on this mapping now if you go to the mapping tab here you can see a source qualifier and the target which you created now this is the place where you have to provide all your details, configuration details. That means I'm, I have to tell Informatica that where exactly is my file, source file. Because if you remember, in my designer, I have never told that what is my file name, where exactly is the location of the file. Because when I will run, I will read the data and I will load the data into another file, I have to tell Informatica, right, but from where he will get that file. So those details I have to tell here. Similarly, I have to tell him that, okay, once the data is processed, is what would be my output file name and also where I want the output file name to be stored. So those information goes here. So you click on this SQ employees and go here, source file directory. Now my source, 
uh, my source file is in the directory csrc file. Okay, that's my directory where my source file is, and my source file name is employees.txt. So I'm good at this. For the target, I want to save my target file I'll in the path output file directory. I want to save my target file in the path C pgt files. All right, and output file name. What would be my output file name? Let's say my output file name is employee underscore pgt dot txt. Okay, this is my output file name. Now, one other thing I want to tell you is here the header option. I want to see the column names as my header in my output file. So you select this one, output field name. So output field names will come as a header. Click OK. So now, now what you have done is you have done all your bookings for your vacation. So your booking, your planning is done and as per your planning you have done, you have done all your bookings, right? Now the final step is actually go in the vacation. So let's that is done in the workflow monitor. So you open the workflow monitor. Let's just open the workflow monitor. Okay. Now let's go back to my workflow manager. And what I'll do is I'll right click here and do start workflow. As soon as I do the start workflow, you go to the workflow man monitor and you can see my workflow is running. So double click this station. It tells you the source and target statistics. So it's telling me there are 107 records which is read from my source and there are 107 records which is loaded to my target. Now the next step is let's go and see the actual target file, right? So my target is in CPGT file and this is the file which is created on 7.26 p.m. M825, let's double click this one and see, yes. So this is my file. If you look here, there are additional zeros here that is for a different reason because, let me tell you that also. That is because if you look here, my employee ID is a decimal and also my department ID is a decimal. So that's why you see all the decimal points here. Uh, in the employee ID and then you get, you see the different key, first name and last name is concatenated and you see the phone number here and then you see the uh, department and ID, right? Any questions so far, anyone? So what, okay, I see some questions. So then. Okay, so, so far what we have done is we have just created a very basic mapping where we have in where we are extracting data from a, a file and then we are doing a very basic transformation just creating the uh, concatenating the first name and last name and populating in my I mean, another file not even in the table another file so I'm generating another file and send it uh, maybe I have to send it to the another team so that's the whole whole idea so the the purpose of this free session is to give you an First name position is 11, okay, 11, yeah, so, oh, that's fine, okay, that, that, see, I mean, I, I got your question, so you, what, what you're saying is first name position is 11, last name position is 11, then why we have 30, right? Because uh, I can make it 20, 22 also, but I make it 30, at the time when I made it 30, I didn't know that it's 11, 11, so that's why I make it 30. But as long as it is big, it doesn't, will not create any problem. But if I make it, let's say, 18 or 20, that might create a problem because after concatenating first name and last name, there is a chance some data might truncate. Okay? Answer the question, Srinivas? Yeah. So, as I was telling, the uh, purpose of this free session is to give you an idea about uh, how Informatica works, how is the look and feel, feel, feel and so by now you have understand that it's a very easy tool, it's mostly drag and drop, you don't actually write the codes, it's 
pretty much drag and drop and Informatica takes care of everything. And the good part of Informatica, as I was telling you yesterday also, know that uh, you know the power printer and eventually you going to learn advanced things because right now um, um, there are a lot of advanced topics in Informatica and there is a lot of demand and not enough resource in the market. Uh, for example, uh, anytime uh, when people are looking for the MDM, good MDM M developers, but there is not much in the market. So if you learn MDM eventually, you will get a very good job with very good pay rate. Then and many, many, and there are many places where uh, informatic, um, like people are, like um, uh, uh, clients are implementing in Hadoop and they are using the ETL for the Hadoop, ETL tool for the Hadoop as Informatica or uh, in using the Informatica to ingest the data into Hadoop ecosystem. So MDM is master data management. That's MDM. Then there is IDQ. IDQ is also a, a good, but uh, probably there is there is good um, a good requirement of IDQ, but MDM is better. Then also uh, nowadays people are using cloud a lot, and Informatica has the capability of connecting to that cloud. So, or if you can learn those, then also you get a very good good um, pay and also a lot of jobs. There are not enough resources. So what I'm trying to tell you is there are a lot of advantage of learning Informatica, but uh, either way you have to learn the power center first because that's the basic thing, that's the ETL, okay? And once you do that, right, and then only you can go for the advanced things. So that's one thing. Second one is if uh, people who are actually looking for, uh, have basics of testing experience or have taken training in testing, for them, and maybe it sounds a little uh, rude, but this is the fact that for QA, there is more supply than demand. So what does that mean is like a uh, uh, lot of people, lot of resource right now in the market who have taken either QA training or have real-time QA experience are sitting on bench because for one single position, maybe 100 people apply, okay? So um, there is more supply than demand. So getting a job with only QA training or only QA experience is very tough these days, very, very tough these days. I have seen people who are trying, literally trying to get a job for six months, eight months in QA, they, they couldn't make it. Still they are struggling. Um, so that's why it's a very good idea that you and you learn something advanced on testing. I'm not saying that uh, ETL testing is only the thing, but you have to learn something advanced. The only QA, basic QA, no, it's very tough to get a job. And the rates are also very, very low. Maybe you will get a rate of $25 or $30 per hour. So, just think about it. If you are a QA person, then you have to learn something advanced. So well, why not ETL? Okay. Um, I see Matthew has a question. I'll unmute you. Hold on for a minute. Yes, go ahead, Matthew. No, it's just the same question. Uh, like, what is the MDM? That's it. It's answered. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, any any other question and anyone have for me? No? Okay, I see uh, people have question. Bindu has a question. Yeah, Bindu, go ahead. Bindu, do you have a question? I have unmuted you, Bindu. Uh, Bindu, we cannot hear you, so uh, uh, again, uh, raise your hand when you are ready, okay? I'll mute you. Uh, Mathu, uh, you have raised your hand. Do you have a question, Mathu? No, I'm good. Okay, then I'll put your hands down. Mm -hmm. uh, Shushma has a question. Shushma, do you want me to unmute you? Uh, no, you have put the question, is how do we implement Informatica for database testing? <clears throat> no, database testing we don't even use implement. Uh, we do, don't use Informatica for database testing. So if you are using, let's say, if you 
are working for a team on which does PL SQL L, L kind of stuff and you are doing testing for them, then you have to learn PL SQL and test it. Um, but you cannot use Informatica to, to do the database testing. No. The purpose of Informatica is different. Yeah, ETL testing definitely, that's what ETL uh, Informatica, uh, so what happens is whatever we have done until now is development, right? Now, the complete cycle is once the development is done, this is handed over to a system test environment. Now, once, they, once this development moves to a system test environment, they do a lot of testing. There is a complete system test life cycle. They have to do uh, several set of testing like integration testing, volume testing, and, um, and data validation testing. So a lot of testing they do. Um, but yeah, that's on um, that's on this Informatica development, right? So that is your ETL testing part. So okay, I think. Uh, People are confused because there is no other tool for Informatica testing, okay? So that's why I was telling at the very beginning that if you want to go for the ETL testing, you have to know this tool at least 20 to 30 percent. I would say 30 to 35 percent, not 100 percent or not even 70, 80 percent, but at least 30 to 35 percent. So let's just think about it. If I, whatever development we have done, if you have to test it, what you have to do is you should know how to run it. You should know how to open the mapping. You should know how to check the expression. So those things you should know. You probably you will never be importing the sources, importing the targets, and create the mappings. No, you will not do that. But you should know when I open the mapping, which is source, which is target, what are all the different transformations, what these different transformations do. Then when you open the session, where do I go and check the source target details? So those things you have to know. That's what your testing is. But you will never create all this. I hope that answers your question, right? Uh, ETL dev is what we have done now. These are all ETL dev activities. You, you do end-to-end -end thing and do the uh, unit testing and then send it to the system test environment. Okay, any other question for me? No? Okay, um, if you do not have any other question, then probably I'll just end the session now because um, this is, uh, I, I, the idea is to cover some of the very basic things in Informatica to give you a look and feel and I, how the tool looks like and also give you the basics of data warehousing, um, basics of why we need a ETL and all those we, what we have covered. So I think we have achieved the uh, whole purpose of the free session. And if you really like this session and think that in, in you want to learn Informatica, then go ahead and register for the course. Also, another thing we will cover in the course, which I have not done here, that is your, uh, in the course usually I, I cover some of the basics of database concepts and basics of SQL, and I, I, give, some, I, give, I give some handouts for your practice. Okay, so this is uh, for the people who need some kind of brush up on their SQL or people who do not know much about SQL, want to learn SQL, that helps for them. And then you don't know we don't need SQL from the day one. Maybe SQL comes after three weeks or four weeks. So you have a, a window of three to four weeks to learn SQL. Okay, and then I will be always there to help you. Are a few other things I want to tell about the course which I have not told, uh, which I have not told you earlier, is this course is more or less around 24 to 26 hours course. So uh, we will, uh, and I try to finish this course within five weeks. So try to cover almost five hours in a week. And we will have the class in the evening, weekdays evening and weekend morning. But right now I don't have the schedule. The reason being is on the first day of the class, I speak with all my students and try to see what are the availability of everyone. And we, we find out the spots where everyone is available and we, 
have the class only those days. So that is um, so every every batch I have different timings, different and um, days for the session. So uh, on the first day of the class also it will be determined. Right now I don't know. That's one thing. Second thing is that after once you take this training, after the end of the training, I usually help people, uh, help my students to build their resumes and also help them to market their resumes and get a job. Okay. Another thing I don't know whether you you know or not, or you know or you don't, is once you take this training, in, and let's say at the end of the training you feel that you are not confident or you need some of the concepts again to be revised or more or, um, uh, hands on on those concepts, as you can actually take this training again for free. So you just pay for once and then and take the training again for free. Okay. Okay. I see someone have a question. Mm, two questions I got. How is the course arranged? Like how many how many total sessions and how long is the session? Usually, I take one hour of say one to one and one to one and a half hour session. Okay, not more than that. And usually three days in a week, three to four days a week. Okay. And I have got another question. Are you planning to have a class over the Labor Day a long weekend? Uh, okay, I don't know. As I told you, right? Right now, I do not have the schedule. Uh, once I have all the students register for this class, then on the first day of the class, we will sit and work on the schedule. So I, right now, I do not have the schedule. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Okay, you can think of every start a batch because I finish each uh, uh, batch within five weeks. So every month we start a batch. Okay, any other question for me? No, if you do not have a question, then thank you.